happy Saturday. It is me, Miss J, and I am here. So excited to get started on our Shine Bright series. Um, I'm looking around, making sure everything is playing, and I actually am not going to have the availability for um, checking out your comments today because for some reason... My Facebook on my phone is just a little crazy. So let me take a minute just to see if I can get there and then maybe I will be able to do it. Okay, so fantastic. I am here and I got you if you are in the comments. Welcome again um, to the Shine Bright series for Ms. J. I am coach, CEO, and owner of the Illumin Group. Um, I do client success coaching and career and life. And so I'm excited because I found this book at the end of last year and it was very simple, kind of like a simple manual um, of things that I was like, oh, <clears throat> this would be awesome content to discuss with um, some of the people that watch the Miss J uh, episodes. So, the book is called Shine, and it is my companion tool for this four-part series. It says 20 Secrets to a Happy Life. It is written by The Essentialist. I found it in Barnes & Nobles in one of my um, visits. My children are avid readers, and so therefore, I find myself in Barnes & Nobles for a couple of uh, hours sometimes, <laughs> every couple of months. And so I located this book and as you, well, you know, book included with the purchase, all of these things not included, but it's a easy read. You probably could read it all in a day, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that because it's something that you definitely want to be able to put some thought and work around, which is why I kind of grouped these four topics together so that we can actually have some opportunity to do the work as we move through the series. So we'll be finishing this at the end of March. Feel free to pick up your copy if you choose. I'll put a link in the bio if I can find it. And then um, you'll be able, or a link down below in this episode so that you can find the book if you choose to. So you can have an opportunity to refer back to it. Now, even though I said it's the easy read, you could probably knock it out in a day. There are some things that I'm going to include in the Miss J Facebook Live episode and then some things that I'm going to include on my YouTube extended episode. So if you want more information, more tips, or my spin on how to interpret and enact these things, I definitely encourage you to go subscribe to the Living and Leading with Miss J Facebook page. That's what it's called today. It might be changed. <laughs> Once it might, the branding might more align with I am Miss J um, later once I consistently go throughout this process. But needless to say, um, I'm excited and we're going to cover these four topics. I'm going to try to do it within a 30 minute time frame. So definitely let me know if you're here. Again, I can see comments, so feel free to reach out to me um, uh, via Facebook if you have the opportunity or if you're watching the replay on Facebook or YouTube definitely definitely let me know that you're here so we're gonna go ahead and get started with our um, first topic and that is actually going to be clarity we're gonna talk about clarity and clarity is first chapter or first section of this book in the shine series and it is um, clarity basically is the ability to see clearly right the ability to understand and to know what you're doing it why you're doing it and how you are doing it and i'm going to use it because it could be several different things based on who you are and where you are in your journey um so i'll just say the it if you are functioning without clarity in your life then you are probably feeling that there's just a sense of going with the flow or being not necessarily being in control of your life or knowing what you're doing 
knowing how you're doing it, knowing why. Um, there was this big push, especially if you are a coach or if you're in human resources or anything like that. There was this um, push on know your why, know your why. And so everyone was like, my why is my kids. My why is to never be poor again. My why is X, Y, Z, whatever the why. The why gives you an opportunity to figure out how you are spending your time. Because if you're going to be clear on your purpose then your purpose is going to help drive several different other actions and interactions. It'll also help drive um, some reactions. And as we go through these four topics, you're going to know that you're going to figure out that they all intertwine. So this a quote from the book says, Clarity allows you to move from the passenger seat to the driver's seat. If you are in the driver's seat, of a real vehicle in the real world, you have to know where you're going. You have to know what your destination is because without that, you're gonna just be driving around aimlessly, wasting gas, which is at an all-time premium if you're watching in March 2022. And you're not really, you don't have a going somewhere, a feeling of, okay, I've made it from point A to point B. You are all just meandering through. And if you are meandering through life, then that itself is something that we want to make sure that you can pull back into and figure out why, figure out how, figure out what. And so two simple questions to start off. Um, I'm going to share two tips in each of these categories on this Facebook Live, and then I will expand upon each of these in the YouTube expanded episode or expanded episode. So two simple questions that you want to ask yourself to kind of get some clarity around those what, how, and why is to basically start from today. I don't want you to go back and be like, oh, I've wasted my life. <laughs> or, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. So am I just aimlessly wandering throughout life without actually making an impact or um, living out my purpose? Two questions that I want you to ask today from this point moving forward is what do I want in my life and excuse me what do I want my life to look like in three years time three years is enough time for you to make a commitment make some changes and make some progress make a commitment make some changes and make progress so that at March Whatever date we are, March 5th, 2025, you can look back and say, I made a commitment to do X, Y, Z, how I'm going to do it and why I'm going to do it. And you'll be able to have some measurable distance between point A and point B. You will also be setting your GPS, setting where you're going by identifying what you want your life to look like in three years. Now, we're going to get to how we get to the three-year point later, but right now, it's just creating the vision, creating the vision, creating the destination, putting the address into your GPS so that you can begin to work toward your destination, whatever that destination would be. The second question you're going to ask yourself when you're thinking about clarity and you're thinking about your three-year mark <clears throat> What mindset would serve me in better moving forward? There are times that we get stuck and unclear because we are doing several different things. We are thinking about where we came from. We're thinking about our current circumstances. We're thinking about where our friends are. We're thinking about what we should have done two years ago. All of these other things are not necessarily forward progress mindsets they are the shackles that are holding you to your present so in order for you to get out of that present and into your future you got to figure out what are some of the things you need to clear out and i'm going to talk about changing mindset a little in that extended episode make sure you watch when you get to youtube make sure you click on subscribe as well so clarity getting out of the passenger seat instead of letting social media or other people's 
opinions or your current situation drive, you want to get out of the passenger seat and drive yourself. Get really clear by asking yourself a couple of different questions about where you are going. We're going to do, these are two good places to start, two simple questions to start at. So that is where you're going to start. And then we will be able to move into something that will help in this transition for you once you get clear. You're going to have to make some changes. And the changes that you're going to make is going to be your decluttering process. You have to get rid of some stuff. Um, you have to get rid of some things before you can move toward your final destination. It is not going to be packing all of the stuff in the bag, in the back seat, in the trunk, and riding with a low rider because you have so much stuff. You're not the bag lady. You got to get rid of some things. So decluttering allows you to be more creative, more free, and more spontaneous. Now, decluttering could be mindset decluttering could be as you see personal relationships on the screen excuse me personal environment and relationships now personal environment seems like the most obvious way obvious place to declutter right let me get rid of all of this stuff living a more simple life will allow you to focus on the things that are most important to focus on things that actually matter not having to worry about cleaning up at, you know, the five million blocks that your kid have played with and strewn around your house, not having to clean up or put away the 7,500 pair of shoes, preaching to the choir, <laughs> that you've accumulated, or the three closets worth of clothes that you've purchased, or the 15 designer bags. All of those things feel good at some points in time. However, they aren't necessarily things that are going to make you more happy in your life. There are momentary pleasures. There are things that make you feel good in the moment. But when you can get to happiness that's a more consistent, a more pervasive, a more long-term feeling that you have within yourself. Now, everyone's vision of happiness is going to be different, right? We're not all going to be happy in the same exact manner. However, Making sure that you don't have all of this stuff that you need to carry is very important. So in your personal environment, they may mean getting rid of the papers that you have stacked up or that you have to file and they never get filed. It may mean cleaning out your pantry, cleaning out your refrigerator, cleaning out your closets, getting things out of the way, taking five pillows off of the bed instead of having 10, now you only have five. Small changes to free up some of your time, your focus, your effort, and your energy. Now, relationships, decluttering relationships, you're probably like, Jay, what are you talking about declutter relationships? This is going to allow you, again, remember where you're going. Step one is to get real clear, get some clarity about where you're going. Step two is to figure out if all the stuff that you have right now is helping you, hurting you, or hindering you. And now it might not be hurting you, it might not be helping you, but it definitely might be hindering you because it's holding you down. It's holding you to your current situation. And some of that is relationships as well. We have people that are happy that we're trying to go somewhere. We have folks that are upset that we're trying to go somewhere. And we have some people that just don't have any emotion about what we're trying to do. But... Look around you as you begin to make your moves. There will be some relationships that will be very apparent that you're going to have to let go. Now, folks are going to say, oh, you changed. You changed, especially over your three-year process. You're going to lose some things, whether it be physical or whether it be intangible. However, if you're not evolving, then what are you doing? So, yes, you changed, and if you're changing for the better, those that really support you for who you are and what you're doing are going to be right there with you when you get to the end of your evolution. Those that are most mad and are hating or bitter about the changes that you're making in life, it's not about what you're doing. It's probably about what they're not doing. 
and they see that you are doing the things that they have the desire coupled with fear to do and you're actually going to be putting this to work in your life so we want to make sure that you are able to get some of those things some of those bags out of your life whether it be personal relationships that are holding you down whether it be physical things that are holding you down whether it be whatever you find that's not going to assist you in getting to your destination remember we're on a journey everywhere every everyone is on a journey right our journeys are going to look different and we're going to be in different places at different times. However, on your journey, when you feel like there's too much stuff in your trunk, you got to let it go. I have other decluttering tips, again, in the extended YouTube. Our next topic that we're going to cover, and I hope I'm not going through this too fast, but I want to make sure that I give you some things to think about because I'm also going to give you an assignment at the end of this. Again, Miss J is about the work. I'm about progress, and you can't get to progress if you aren't committed to yourself. So this episode, the series, is about getting to your happiness and you can only do that by committing to yourself, by getting to some work. So let me just take a pause here. And I'll say that your first job when it comes to clarity is to answer those two questions. To take 15 minutes of quiet time and to write down your vision for your three years. Where are you going to be in three years? Think about it in multiple categories. Think about it in career, family, love, geography, spiritual walk, finances, all of those things and anything else that you think that needs to change. And then I want you to identify when you're answering question number two, what mindset is going to help you get there. Think about how you currently think about your career, how you currently think about your finances and if it's serving you or if it's something that you need to change your mind about. And I want you to write down the affirmations that are going to support that three year vision in whatever category that you have. These are the things that you're going to repeat to yourself, put in a space that you can come back to and say, I will have $5,000 in the bank, five, 15, 50, whatever is in your realm <laughs> of ex whatever you can execute, write it down. If it comes to love, I will be in a committed relationship where I have reciprocity and communication, time, effort, etc. Write down those things, put them all over your mirror. Be If you've ever watched Being Mary Jane, you see that she had all this stuff all over the space. Put it somewhere where you're going to see it every day. And then make sure you're writing those affirmations so that you can help change your mind. So instead of being like, oh, I'm stuck in this job that I hate. You can be like, I'm working toward a career that I love and I want to go to work every day happy. Those are the things that you're going to write so that you can understand I need to make changes. And as you're living this journey, if you are seeing that there's something that's holding you back, if that job is your shackle, then you're going to have to shed that job. If that person who won't commit to you is your shackle, then you're going to have to shed their relationship baggage. If you have a best friend who is more of a hater or a friend of me than a friend, then you're going to have to shed that in order to get to the space that you want. But at least now you know where you're going and you're not going to be accepting just what you currently have. This is the key to moving towards your happier self. Decluttering goes hand in hand. Look around your space. Figure out where you have those piles that you're consistently coming back to. I know there's a couch in my bedroom. It collects stuff. It is the collector. I don't know why I have this couch in my bedroom because I feel like in my vision, this is where I relax and re unwind with a glass of wine. In reality, I, can't, I can only sit there maybe two times a month <laughs> when I clean up. All of the clothes and the packages and whatever else, my robe, my shower caps, all the things that just kind of end up on that space. Maybe I just need to remove it and therefore it takes me less effort to spend time on that. Figure out those places that cause you to consistently go back because they are collecting clutter. 
That can be the conversations that you have to revisit 17 times with your brother because he just can't get past it. Figure out where I'm not going to spend any more time here. I'm not going to spend any more time here. I have to move forward, move on, and simplify this version of whatever it is so that I can be doing something different, focusing on something else. Those are your assignments. You know, one of the things that I uh, have a conversation with my friend, Miss April Money McCann's about is, uh, I call it my millionaire wardrobe. And, you know, I, I have always been someone that was like kind of very into fashion and like I would watch this is going to age me definitely, but I would watch Like and Live in Color or A Different World and all those things, and I'd be like, oh, I'm going to wear this tomorrow. Like, TV dictated my fashion. And so, um, but I'm like, you know what? I need my millionaire wardrobe, which is very simple, potentially monochromatic. Um, I need that Steve Jobs, you know, jeans and black t-shirt or turtleneck or whatever the case may be so that I don't have to spend my time focusing on what I'm going to wear. I don't have to spend an hour thinking about what is my shirt and my pants or my dress and my shoes, which bag am I going to carry, all of those things. Just make it simple, make it easy. I told my husband I'm probably going to be a boho chic lady at the end. I want to be, I'll be probably 50 and in resort wear <laughs> because I just want it to be easy. I don't want to have to think about it. Um, but I wanted to be cute. I also wanted to be simple. But I have to figure out a method to make that part of my life just easy. Like, just easy. I wanted to be on autopilot. So, homework for step one, homework for step two. We're going to move on into step three. And this is going to be values. Getting connected and aligned with your values. Knowledge of your values protect you from external influences and provide you empowerment. Now, I really love this statement when I was reading it in the Shine um, book because I was like, huh, interesting. It protects me from external influences and it empowers me. And how does that actually work? Well, number one, if I know what my values are, then I can measure everything around me according to that value. So if I value respect when someone is being disrespectful to me, then I know I need to exit or remove myself from the situation. I won't be in relationships where respect is um, at a minimum or non-existent. I won't be in whether those relationships be personal, professional, etc. I will give respect to those who I engage with. I will demand and I will give respect because that is a high value for me. And it is in my real life. Miss J does have a value of respect. I, I tolerate disrespect very... I don't tolerate disrespect really in any aspect of my life. <laughs> I have to correct that or remove myself. Um, it's just not a place that I choose to dwell in. But you have to understand where your boundaries are. What are the things that you're going to accept and what are the things that you're not going to accept? And that are that is kind of the foundation of understanding where your values are. Now, your values are accumulation of all of your lived experiences. We get our values. We start building values from youth, from our nurture and nature. So if you grew up in a household where Sunday dinners or quiet time or family time, vacations, then those types of things begin, begin to be something that you value. You value familial relationships. And so if you value family relationships, you probably are going to be one of those people that are making sure that you are with your family, spend holidays with your family, go to family reunions. You probably have really good relationships with your cousins or sisters or whatever the case may be because that's something that you value. If you value independence, then you're going to live your life according to that. Most people who value independence, they want to be surrounded by and in places where they have the influence to do what they choose to do. So that might be more of an entrepreneurial um, an entrepreneurial career. It might be a child-free lifestyle. It might be someone who doesn't necessarily want to be married because they'd rather catch a flight instead of catch feelings. But you need to understand where your values are. We're going to talk about that and I'm going to give you a list of potential values if you don't necessarily know how to communicate or identify, document your values. We're going to talk about it in the extended episode. But what I want you to do is to identify your top three values. 
top three values. These are the things that are going to be your deal breakers. No, um, these are things that are present in my everyday life. They are going to guide how you make your decisions and they're also going to guide how you react. So let's say I told you I don't, I value respect. In my relationships, I'm never going to be disrespectful to my friends and I'm definitely never going to be disrespectful to my husband. I would never do something that is going to um, diminish the level of respect that I have for him and that he has for me. And so therefore, I engage in a manner that is highly respectful. I don't, I'm not an arguer, I'm not a yeller, screamer, I don't curse, I don't call names, I don't fight dirty, um, because that's a level of respect that I have. And those are also things that I wouldn't tolerate the opposite way. I wouldn't tolerate that coming towards me, so I'm definitely not going to dish it out. So I know that respect in every vein of my life is high, a high value. Um, and so that's how I react to others in a respectful manner. If someone's out of line, I'm not just going to pop off because they popped off on me. <laughs> I'm going to do it in a, in a way that's going to be um, <clears throat> respectful and hopefully de-escalate the situation. Even though it will be very clear that that was inappropriate and unacceptable. So that's what number two says. Connect your decisions and your actions to your values. If you value family, if you value independence, if you value whatever the other things are, does that show up in your day-to-day -day life? And if it's not showing up in your day-to-day -day life, if you are compromising, if you are compromising your values so that you can have things, then you're probably not going to be in a space where happiness also resides. So, respect. I'm not going to be in a relationship with someone who is disrespectful to me. Period. Even though... They might be cute, handsome, rich, whatever the case may be. I, I can't tolerate that. Therefore, I'm not going to have that in my life because I value respect more than I value looks, more than I value riches, more than I value trips, whatever the other cases may be. You also have to make sure that your life aligns with your values and it's going to make you feel more centered and better at the end of the day. So two ways to engage your values is first to know what they are, to name it. The second thing is to make sure that everything in your life is aligned with those. Connect your decisions and your actions to them. If you value nonviolence, then you want to make sure that that shows up wherever you are. You don't gonna, you're not going to go watch the newest movie that is gory and 17 people die in the opening scene. So you want to make sure that you're aligned. And when you find alignment with your values, you're going to be headed toward a space of happiness faster because you're not going to be confused. That first topic, clarity, decluttering, values. We're stringing these together. They go together seamlessly once you start to think about it. So today you're going to do the work to make sure that you can get to a space where you can name it and you can live it. All right, let's move on to our last um, topic. And this is something that I probably could talk about for hours. <laughs> I am a success coach. So goals is kind of like what drives my business. Someone who has goals and aspiration not only drives my business, but it also drives my passion because I consider myself to be a highly ambitious person. And so it is something that keeps me moving in the right direction. So the quote on, the, uh, on this visual here, there we go says goals inspire motivate and help you to prioritize your life so goals we we you probably have heard about this and if you've watched anything miss j if you come to any of my workshops or taken any of my um any any of these things you're going to know that goals is what drives um how you move in life because if you don't have that end destination or that next destination pinned out for you then again like i just talked about a few minutes earlier you probably ain't wonder one oh, excuse me aiming wandering aimlessly <laughs> 
<laughs> I couldn't even get that out. You're probably wondering aimlessly and just looking around at your expectations going, how am I still here? How am I still here two years later? How am I still here um, in the same space, in the same city, in the same relationship, in the same job, in the same you know, dysfunctional friendship, whatever the case may be, it's because you haven't set a goal that moves you towards your next level, moves you toward a new level, something that you have been able to commit to. Now, goal setting is about basically pulling that dream, that pie in the sky out of your head and onto paper so that you can make sure that you can get it done. Your two goal setting tips, and there are hundreds of them, I probably... Um, utilize maybe 20, 20 different techniques to make sure that we can attain goals within my coaching practice. However, the first thing that you definitely want to do is to write it down. You got to make it tangible. Get it out of your head and into the world. And the first way that it shows up in the world, that first creation, is in the phase of documenting your goal. So I'm going to turn to the book really quickly because there is something that I wanted to um, directly quote in the goal section um, because it's, I think it's the, just the best way to say it. Having simple, clear goals will help you measure your progress, which in turn boosts your motivation. It's common for people to complicate the goal setting process. Remember, your goals do not have to be big and bold, life-changing efforts. And a lot of times we get caught because we think that a goal has to be some humongous thing that's going to take us a year, 12 months, 6 months to get to. It can be something simple. It can be a daily goal that ends up getting you to there. So that taking the bigger thing and thinking about it in chunks, right? I want to lose 15 pounds. But that means that today I have to ride three miles on my stationary bike. And every day I have to ride three miles, whatever the case may be. Um, small daily goals we set and act upon have the most powerful impact and offer the greatest reward over time because they become habits. So at first you have to take that desire, make it a reality, take it out of here, put it on paper, Write it down because when you write it down, your brain says, okay, this is something that we're going to do, right? It, it becomes an action when you write it down. Just like people who, people who learn, um, typically if you're writing and taking notes, you retain that information. It sticks around a little bit longer uh, than a conversation that you had or something that you might have heard. So if you take the time to take it out, write it down, then your brain says, okay, this is something that we have to think about. This is something that we have to retain and hold on to. And then you evaluate daily. Now, this writing down can be several different ways. You can do it on a, on a pad. You can do it in your notebook. You can do it in one of my favorite tools, which is a vision board, which is a, a prettier, kind of more graphic way to, um, to document your goals. But you need to evaluate daily so that you can understand if you are keeping your commitment to moving forward. So if your commitment was to ride three miles each day on that bike, did you do it today? And if you didn't do it today, what kept you from it? And how can you course correct so that you can do it every day for the next 20 days, whatever the case may be? There are several goal setting tips. There are several goal setting methodologies. Again, I told you I have a lot of them in my toolkit. I just wanted you to start here. If you've never verbalized and committed to a goal this is where you're going to start the simplest form say what you want write it down look at it and evaluate it daily did I do something today that moved me toward this did I do something today that moved me toward my new job did I do something today that moved me to a deeper commitment in my relationship to did it move me toward losing weight? Did it move me toward my next trip to the international destination of my dreams? Write down your goal, evaluate daily so that you stay committed. And again, it helps you to prioritize. So if I have six different things that I can do, but I know that my goal is, I'll just say to lose 15 pounds, and I could get on Facebook, I could call my sister, I could read a book, 
I could go to sleep, I could watch the new thing on TV, or I could get on my bike. The one thing that allows me to move towards my goal is getting on the bike. So that should be my priority. Now I can get on the bike and maybe I can multitask. Maybe on that bike while I'm riding those three miles, I can call my sister. But however, if there was a choice and I had to make a bilateral or make one choice out of all of those, I would choose the priority which would help me move toward my goal. So that's how you function and that's how you activate the goal, the movement process in holding yourself accountable by committing and evaluating them daily. All right. So that was a lot of information. I gave you your homework for the first two. If you need to go back and rewind, definitely do that. Um, the second thing that I'm going to tell you to do is to make sure that you write down some of the goals that connect back to your clarity, where you're going to be in three years. What does that look like? If three years means you're going to be in your forever home, you need to write down some financial goals. If three years means that you're going to be married with two kids, <laughs> then you better make sure that you're understanding how that how to make that come to life. All right. I think that this has probably been um, a little over 30 minutes. And so what is going to happen next is that I'm going to do my cut scene, the end scene for Facebook. But I'm still going to come back probably a 15, 20 minute break. I'm going to end the Facebook Live. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, you will see the end scene. And then I'll come back on with the bonus content and information. So just give me about 20, 30 seconds. If this is your first time joining me, I am Miss J. It was a pleasure to come and talk to you about something that I hope will have a tangible impact on your life. You can feel free to reach out to me via social media, um, uh, hello at missj.com. That's where all of my endeavors live. Or you can go directly to my coaching business, which is the Illumin Group. You can reach that at www.illumine.group. And I will get in touch with you. Um, email address, all of that contact information is on the website uh, and of course at MsJ.com. So there's some contact information below. I hope that your week is fabulous. I hope that this helps you in some manner. Do the work. Don't just watch this and then go on by your business. Do the work. Make sure you get it done before Monday. Next week I'll be back with part two of the Shine Bright series and we're going to move on to another four topics that's going to help you pursue a happier life. So take care. I'll see you shortly. See you on YouTube. Thank you for staying and for joining me. Um, I'm going to go through some extra tips for you. So I'm going to go back to our first topic. And let me bring this up um, just in case. Just as a reminder, I'm not going to go through what I said on that Facebook uh, post. But I wanted to, just to understand where clarity was. Um, and so or understand... <laughs> where we are when I'm talking about your your bonus tips for clarity. Your bonus tips for clarity, and I told you I have all of these things, um, is going to start with just asking yourself several different questions uh, uh, in order to understand your why, your what, and your how. So get your pencil down, push pause if you need to. I'm going to give you these notes. In addition to the two simple questions that are on there, I have about five other questions that you can ask yourself. Some of these may seem cliche, but if they seem cliche, that means that you are on the right path and that you are in the process or you have been in the process of doing some of the work. So um, question number one, who or what is most important to me? Who or what is most important to me? I want you to spend some time, ask yourself this until you're 100% committed to it. Number two, 
what do I want right now? So three years is part of the, the longer, the end game, but right now is something that you want to have the conversation about as well. Number three, getting really clear. If I did not have fear, what would I be doing moving forward? If I wasn't afraid, if I wasn't trapped by that fear, what would I be doing moving forward? Number four, what am I putting up with right now? Oh gosh, that one right there, oh, it just it just makes me feel some type of way because a lot of times we're tolerating things that aren't necessarily for our best. We're tolerating a lot of things that aren't for our best. So we want to make sure that you understand that. Um, and I can work through these things, of course. If you set up some coaching calls, we can go through this together and not only have you do the work, but also hold you accountable to how we're going to move forward. And number five, where do I sabotage myself mentally, physically, and emotionally? Because you got to understand where your barriers are so that we can move them out of the way. Therefore, we can get to our next best self. All right, now I'm going to move on and give you your bonus tips for decluttering. Your bonus tips for decluttering are, number one, clean as you go. This relates to your personal environment, things to declutter. Um, using a one-touch policy, pick it up, put it where it's supposed to go. I know sometimes I pick it up, I put it on the counter, then I have to take it from the counter to the bedroom. Instead of putting it where it needs to go in the bedroom, I put it on the dresser. And so then the dresser becomes cluttered. Pick it up, put it away. Make sure that, make that a practice in every day when you're on your cleaning and kind of cleaning as you go. Instead of having a one day clean, like, oh, we clean on Saturdays. then that means that your house potentially is cluttered throughout the week. So it either needs to go in its place or it needs to go in the trash. Number two, prepare for tomorrow today. Getting things ready and organized the night before so that you're not trying to figure out where things are. Now, this is kind of the opposite of spontaneous, but uh, <laughs> if your house and your personal environment and your friendships, etc., are all in a space where it is kind of easier to get to um, and easier to do, these are the things that help free up time, thought processes, etc. Um, number three, set up systems with reminders in your diary or wherever you keep your notes for keeping on top of your spaces and your routines. So this is something that I've done with my kids for a long time um, as far as letting them know what are the chores they need to do and what are the things. So they know what happens on trash day. They know what happens on you know a, um, a practice day, whatever the case may be, and what things need to be cleaned when so that the space remains at a consistent level of cleanliness. And then number I don't know what I, where I was at. I think number four, don't confuse intent with action. I like this when it comes to um, personal relationships because people who say they don't intend on X, Y, Z, I don't intend on hating on you, pulling you down, changing your mood, etc. but they are consistently acting in that way. That is a disconnect and that's something that needs to be um, changed. So if that's that constant nagging or if that's that constant, uh, you can't do it, your little business, that condescending tones, those are the things that you need to watch out for, especially if it's repeated, repeated actions after it has been addressed. So you want to make sure that you are not confusing intent with action. What they say is better than what they do is better than what they say. Bonus tip for values. I'm going to actually end up putting a document um, in the link. So you'll have to come back for that. Um, a link in the YouTube chat so that I'll list out some values and some information that you can um, get to as you're doing your values work. We want to make sure that you have the ability to kind of be able to um, verbalize and connect what you are valuing in life because you want to make sure, again, that your actions align with those values. And then my last bonus tip for um, this session on the YouTube is goals. Now, I talked about writing them down and I talked about evaluating them daily, but number one, you have to set goals with intention. And so making sure that you own them and you have a strong, genuine desire and connection to the goals that you're writing. Otherwise, it really isn't going to happen. Um, 
And so I want you to also make sure that they are specific. Be specific in what you're writing down. Not just that I want to lose weight, but I want to lose 15 pounds or um, whatever the case may be. Again, I go through a goal setting process in my, with all of my clients. Um, give yourself a deadline. Make sure that it's time bound so that you understand that you have to be connect, committed to it when you're evaluating it daily. Again, do it in bite-sized chunks. Don't get overwhelmed by the big picture, but also reward yourself for the things that you are successful at. So if you've ridden that bike those three miles consecutively for a week, reward yourself for that. Recognize the small successes, the small wins, and take care of you. So hopefully that was beneficial. Again, my contact information is going to pop up on this end screen. I really hope that you enjoyed this kind of extra uh, five or so minutes <laughs> of uh, extra content. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Again, the coaching practice information is um, you can reach out to info at illumin.group or you can just send me a DM with um, your information and the instant messages or whatever contact information is on YouTube. I have to look at that. I'll make sure that I put in the website information as well as how to get in direct contact with me. So take care. Thanks for hanging around or for tuning in for the extra, uh, the bonus content. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a great day.